So hello and welcome everybody. And um, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Anna Volkmer. I'm a senior speech and language therapist at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery. And I'm one of the team members running the PPA support group. And we thought today it would be really helpful to share some practical tips for managing your communication during lockdown. And these are tips that we've collated from people living with primary progressive aphasia and their families. So the first thing that people have shared is the fact that actually having a really good routine supports them in their communication, in their conversation and their interactions. And actually having a routine can be quite tricky. So sharing the routine with a loved one with PPA can be really difficult because actually accessing a calendar with lots of written information on it can be really, really hard. So one of the things that people have aimed to do and, and that I've actually supported many people to do is make their routine accessible. So some people have bought whiteboards and uh, use whiteboards um, to write on or pin pictures on or photos on. Other people have printed a piece of white paper and or we've sent them a laminated piece of paper with this routine on it. And then they've used it to stick pictures or use keywords of people in your actual lives. So, for example, I was working with somebody recently and they were saying that in the past, at the beginning of every week, um, they put all the things on the calendar and they'd individually check the calendar so they knew what was going on. But what they were doing now is actually sitting down together at the beginning of every week and um, using photos of the people in their families and sticking them onto a, um, a, a chart like this just so that their, their wife, the wife who had primary progressive aphasia could actually know exactly who was coming and exactly what activities that they were going to do with pictures of the activities from their own home and they plan that in advance and they'd incorporate into that routine daily activities that you might not normally include on a um, on a calendar so they were incorporating things like activities they do around the home together leisure activities like dominoes or even things like physical activity and seeing family and i'm going to talk about each of those in turn now starting with um, routine daily activities and one of the things uh, people have said to me is that doing routine daily activities together and considering them an activity that they collaborate on has been something that's really helped them uh, communicate and be together. And often I talk to people about the fact that conversation isn't actually always verbal. Conversation is also something we do non-verbally, where, for example, one person may be washing up and the other person may be drying up. And as one person washes one item, they pass it to the person who's drying up, who dries it. And there's some non-verbal communication and interaction that becomes part of being together. So what people have talked about is really um, focusing on things that aren't just about, you know, discussing the the philosophy and politics. And at the moment, lots of people aren't so keen on discussing those, but actually being together and doing things together, that's also a type of conversation. And I just wanted to share a picture of this. This is a picture of somebody polishing furniture. And there's been some lovely research that's been actually published in Guardian recently, where they talked about the importance of doing these types of activities um, uh, to give a person meaning and purpose and, and pleasure in daily routine. The other thing people have talked about is physical activities. And so one couple I was talking to, they, they were explaining that they've been going on a daily walk together. And on that walk, they would hold hands. And often the person with uh, primary progressive aphasia would communicate to her husband by indicating which route they should take. So it's like gently nudging her husband down the path she wanted to go to. And he talked about that as being part of their conversation and their experience of being together. He also talked about um, going to a park that they felt safe in and going at a time of day where they where there weren't too many people, but actually that, that act of going out being really important. 
The other thing somebody shared with me recently was that they bought a table tennis um, table and propped it up in the garage. And they talked about this table tennis. So tennis being a almost like a conversation where they each took turns. One person took a turn, the next person took a turn. And that this could really um, take up hours and hours of their day, but actually that their loved one was really good at it. And she felt this, this interaction really revealed his competence in a conversation. And other people have shared ideas like doing yoga online jointly, just by Googling these things through YouTube, for example. Another thing I've talked quite a bit about not communicating actually, and something that people often speak about is the value of quiet time. And somebody recently described um, being quietly with her partner as being in a safe space. And this, I thought this really beautifully summarized what many, many people have said to me over the years is that actually being together while doing something that doesn't require speech and language, but being together whilst coloring, watching television, or jointly solving a puzzle, which again, you know, doesn't require language you can put forward a piece or put forward another piece without actually having to talk about it or even listening to music or playing music together together that might be something that people enjoy doing these are things that you can do together that act where the emphasis is not on the talk but it's on the uh, the quiet activity that you're undertaking However, people have really emphasised that it's been important for them to keep in touch with others. And this is not only the person with PPA themselves, but also their, their loved ones that they're living with. And I think one of the things that people talk about here is that it, it doesn't have to be all tech. It can also be a phone call. And when they were doing that phone call, they didn't only um, do that on the telephone with one individual. People often shared that they'd put the call on speakerphone so that even if their loved one with PPA couldn't actually talk to that call, they'd be part of it and could hear the, the exchange that was happening. What people have shared with us, however, is that they have tried out technology and they've urged us to share this with others. So people who would never ever normally explore technology um, are trying out video calls, they're trying out platforms like Zoom, or they've tried out things like WhatsApp, um, they've tried out things like FaceTime, and they've all unanimously reported back that trying this technology out has had really positive consequences um, in terms of keeping in touch with family members, but also in terms of the communication needs of their loved ones. So video calls have the power of allowing you to see the non-verbal communication of the other person and actually really increase the group nature of a conversation. So people talked about doing group Zooms with family members, attending a Friday night quiz every week. And even if their loved one with PPA couldn't participate in the entire quiz, that loved one was often able to be present. And if they became fatigued, they could withdraw from the conversation and then re-enter it appropriately at a later time. And in my clinical work, what I found is actually that often trying it out and can result in a success very easily and very quickly. And if it doesn't result in success, there's lots of people available who can help. I've often found that people with primary progressive aphasia um, can use their resources that are not language based. So facial expression, tone of voice, pointing, gesture, jointly having uh, uh, explaining something with their loved ones. People are often able to bring a photo from another room or bring an object from another room to show on a video call and equally see that in others. So they're able to if perhaps their auditory processing is not so good, they can see what's being said, they can see the lip movements, they can see the, the, the other person's gestures. The other thing, so just a couple more points to make here, is that people have shared with us it's been really important um, to alert other people to their communication difficulties during the current COVID pandemic. So we've spent lots of time making things like this, so almost, almost like wallet cards or laminated communication cards, explaining the needs of the person with a PPA so that when they're going to their local shops or when they meet somebody, they're able to um, provide the information um, on, a, on a written card. For example, the other thing um, we've often also um, supported people to do is, is go to their local shops and talk to their local shopkeepers so that those people understand that maybe that person isn't able to wear a mask 
one of the key things that people have said throughout, however, is the importance of talking about all of this, of sharing their experiences, sharing tips and hints. Um, the Rare Dementia Support runs lots of support group meetings. So we have three like today throughout the year, but we've also got lots of smaller group meetings and um, connecting people with, with other people um, is, is really valuable. And I can share also from my clinical experience that lots of people I've worked with, even if they're their music groups or their activity groups have ceased. There's been some um, opportunities to participate in things online. So for example, um, online communication cafes, online music groups, online choirs that people have still been able to um, participate in and feel really rewarded by. So just finally, if you're having difficulty with communication or just more broadly during lockdown, then please do get in touch and ask us for help. We've developed an emergency toolkit and, and we can help you brainstorm any difficulties you're having on a regular basis. Thank you very much.